In this video, we're going to discuss percent yield. So what is percent yield? When you do a reaction, you should make so much product. So let's look at a reaction like NaCl plus AgNO3, sodium chloride plus silver 1 nitrate. Well, these will react and create silver chloride and sodium nitrate. Now this is great in solution because both of these actually dissolve the starting materials. But the product, silver chloride, is actually a solid. And so as soon as they meet in water, they start to turn into a powder and they sink to the bottom. So it's an easy reaction to observe and see occur. Well, if we want to add up molecular masses, a sodium plus a chloride, so 22.99, 35.45, it's going to be 58.44 grams per mole. And I'm only going to use the ones we're going to use for this example. We're going to do silver chloride as well. And so silver is 107.9. Chloride, again, 35.45. For a total molecular mass of silver chloride at 143.35 grams per mole. So the problem we're going to use doesn't use the other two, so we don't need to solve them for this. What we're going to look at is we're going to react 15.0 grams of NaCl. And we obtain 32.5 grams of silver chloride. So this is what actually happens. You are in lab. You take a solution of silver nitrate, you take some sodium chloride, you mix them together, you know you add 15 grams of sodium chloride, you collect the sodium chloride that you produce. And it weighed 32 and a half grams. Question is, is that the right amount? That might be what you collected, but I mean, what if you dropped some? What if you left some behind? Like, You don't always get what you're supposed to. Think if you've ever cooked brownies or cookies you know, there's a little bit of batter left on the spatula or got stolen. I know several spoonfuls of cookie dough never become cookies whenever I make them. The idea is you might know how much you put in, but that doesn't mean all of it actually became what it was supposed to be. A lot of times with glassware in the lab, there's just some stuck on the edge. You scrape at it and you try to get it all out, but not all of it will leave the glassware. You might spill a little, and sometimes we don't haven't seen it yet, but some of your reactants do something else. They don't necessarily all become products. Sometimes they run into some impurity and they do a separate reaction, and so 1 or 2% of your starting material doesn't do what you thought it was supposed to do. As a result, you never quite obtain the amount you think you're supposed to make. Well, first we need to figure out what is it we were supposed to make. And so we're going to calculate the max product based on starting material. The idea is I put in 15 grams of sodium chloride. How much product could I have made? Well, 15.0 grams of NaCl, and our goal is to find the max silver chloride. Well, I'm in weight of one compound. And I want to be in weight of another compound. I can't go straight from weight of one molecule to weight of another. I have to go through moles. So my first step here is to get out of grams of NaCl and into mole of NaCl. Remember, moles are numbers. Once I have the number of sodium chloride, I can use a balanced reaction to find the number of other molecules. Well, there are 58.44 grams of sodium chloride in every one mole. So I have 15 out of almost 60, so I should have about a quarter. And indeed, if you add this up, it's 0 0.25667 mole of NaCl. And realistically, we started with 1, 2, 3 sig figs. Molecular mass had 4, so we're still floating 3 sig figs. Well, I have my moles of sodium chloride. My next step is to convert moles of 
my starting material into moles of my product. How much product, how much product could I have made? Well, 0 0.25667 mole of NaCl. And I want to get out of mole NaCl and into mole silver chloride. Well, the balance reaction had us one for one. So I should make the same number of moles. I should make, assuming all of my sodium chloride converted, I should make 0 0.25667 moles of my product, silver chloride. Well, we made 32 and a half grams. Is that all of it? Like we have the moles at the moment. How much should this many moles weigh? So our last step then is to convert the moles of silver chloride, 0 0.25667 mole of silver chloride, and convert it into weights of silver chloride. So mole, silver chloride, to grams of silver chloride. We added up that molecular mass. One mole of silver chloride is 143.35 grams of silver chloride. Calculate that out, you'll find 36.794 grams of silver chloride. What we've done here, we took our starting mass of compound A, which was sodium chloride, doesn't matter which one, I just I had a starting mass of a reagent. I used that to find the moles of A. I used that to find the moles of a second compound, in this case, my silver chloride. I use that to find the grams of B possible. 36.8-ish grams of silver chloride is the maximum I could have made because that's what the weight of 0.256 moles of silver chloride is. And the reason we're looking at that moles of silver chloride is because that's what the balance reaction says we would have gotten from the moles of sodium chloride we started with, which we got from the weights of sodium chloride. That weight of sodium chloride should have made 6.8 grams of silver chloride. But we saw up above, when we were done doing the reaction, we only had 32.5. We did not get as much silver chloride as we should have. Now we say that's this is normal. Most of the time, you don't make as much of what you're trying to make as you could. You lose a little bit, you eat some of the cookie dough, you leave a little bit in the glassware, you drop some on the floor. Whatever source, you don't obtain what you think you should have got. And so what we have here are two separate values. Our top one is our actual. This is what we measure when we physically weigh it on our scales. And the bottom is our max theoretically possible. Well, percent yield is a measure of how close did you get to the maximum possible. If every time you do a reaction you only get half of what you would have thought you should have gotten, well, that's a problem. You're wasting a lot of re resources. There's a lot of material that's not in your product. Which then raises the question, where did it go? Did you accidentally flush it down the drain? Are people breathing it? Is it still mixed in with your product and it's now a dangerous contaminant? Like, it matters where all the rest of it goes. So percent yield gives you an idea how good your reaction is and your cleanup method and your isolation method when you try to package it. The way this works is that you have your actual over your theory times 100 percent and that's it so we would say well, what was our actual weight it was 32.5 grams of silver chloride i was supposed to get 36.794 grams of silver chloride and so i can solve what percentage of the maximum i got in our case 88.33%. At this point, we can look at sig figs. We'd said it was 3 for our moles, 
So it's still three. Our molecular masses were always more than three. So really it was just three carried through. Still three carried through. When we're all done, we'll keep three. And so this will round to 88.3%. This reaction was 88-ish percent effective. So we lost about 12%, which might not seem a lot at first, but if you're making a million pounds of Tylenol and you have a contract to ship that out to Bear or whoever is buying it, and you only deliver them 800,000 pounds, or even if you give them 900,000 pounds, they're upset that they're missing 100,000 pounds of a chemical. Like this percentage matters quite a bit. In fact, if you do advanced organic reactions, any reaction that's less than 99% generally won't get used, unless it's research only. The idea is you're wasting money on the chemicals you're buying. You're wasting money cleaning it up afterwards. You're wasting money disposing of the waste chemicals that the, you, know, you can't just dump in the river because they hurt the fish and everything else. And so you want the best possible yields you can get most of the time. A complicating factor for that is also if you have reactions that chain together. A lot of times you make a compound, but then you'll react it again to make a third, and then a fourth, and then a fifth. If each of these was only 95% efficient, well, each time you're losing more and more material. And what will happen is by end of four reactions, you might have started with 100 starting material, whatever it was. But by the time you're at the end, you have 81.5. In only four steps, you've lost 20-ish percent of your material almost. And a lot of advanced drug synthesis might be 20 or 30 steps. You can end up with only a third as much stuff as you should have had based on what you started with. So percent yields are important, and this is how we go and calculate them. It really just comes down to you use stoichiometry to go from an amount of a starting material to find the amount of product you should have been able to make. That's the theory. And then you will actually weigh or be told the actual weight that you obtained. And so actual over theory times 100% gives us our percentage.